Hi, I'm George. And I'm Trevor. And I don't work for Farming Smarter. And I do work for Farming Smarter. I'm actually, George, I'm, a, as a, I'm a, an agronomist. I run my own crop consulting company, and we're going to talk about what's the best time to roll barley. And the reason uh, we're kind of doing this was over the years, as I've been scouting my customers' fields, they always seem to roll the barley about this day before or the same day I was trying to scout for weeds. It kind of drove me crazy. I said, there's got to be a better time to be able to roll the barley and not interfere with other operations, other things that have to be done. So I was talking with Ken back a few months ago, and I said, is it possible we could do, put together a little trial here? He said, sure. So here we have the trial, and I'll let Trevor tell you what the, what the actual trial is. Yeah, so uh, that was a quick intro, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm in my second year with Farming Smarter as a research associate, and I'm in charge of managing the contract research here. So trials like the Rolling Barley with George, um, other spray trials for all sorts of other companies, FMC, and, and a lot more. Um, yeah, and I'll get right into the trial setup. So these plots are typical for our research plots here. They're, they're two and a half meters by six meters, and we have a, a large pathway between so that we can drive and uh, get to all the other plots that are randomized. So there might be a plot here, then we have to drive all the way down there and get one. So we made that so we can get there nicely. Um, and our roller, we don't have it out here with us. It's a cute little baby roller. It's just under two and a half meters. So these plots were, were perfect to roll. How, how much did that roller weigh? Do you have any idea? Per foot? Yeah, it, it weighed approximately 500 pounds per foot of roller. So just like a typical, typical large roller that any farmer would have. Uh, we did fill ours with water. I know some farmers aren't filling theirs with water, but we're, we're typical for the weight. Yeah, we wanted to make sure on that. And we seeded here uh, CDC bow barley with our air drill with the pillar laser. And we seeded at 300 seeds per meter squared. A little bit under maybe what a typical farmer would be seeding, um, but it's, it's quite a high rate. And that's approximately 157 kilograms per hectare. So for the treatments, we set up seven treatments. We set up an untreated check here that didn't get rolled at any time. We had treatment number two, which got rolled the day after seeding. Treatment number three got rolled at the first leaf. Treatment number four at the two leaf. Yeah. Treatment number five at the four leaf. No, the three leaf, yeah, lost track there. And treatment number six at the four leaf. Yeah. And then treatment number seven at the first node stage. So are there yeah. any visual effects that you can see so far? Yeah, so let's go through quickly. Uh, Everything up to treatment number five, which was rolled at the three leaf, doesn't, you can't really see any difference. Uh, treatment number five that was rolled at the three leaf, it seems like you can visually pick it out as you walk, even in the other reps. It's just very slight, um, but it's still looking really good. Really hard to tell if there was much difference, but I was thinking through why that would be. It might be that the three leaf is an important stage for the crop, um, but when I rolled it, I also noted that there was really high humidity that day. I rolled uh, two days after we had some rain that week, so I rolled it on a Sunday, and it was it was fairly dry. The, the ground was still a little soft, but uh, I didn't pick up any mud as I was rolling, so that high humidity, maybe the crop was, was growing and uh, at that time, it kind of damaged it just a little. Also, we sprayed a maintenance spray of Buctrolem and Achieve the day after rolling. And I don't know if that interfered with the plant able to metabolize that chemical. Maybe just hurt it just slightly. Um, so there's other questions that are coming up for us maybe in the future to look at. Uh, interestingly enough, at the four leaf rolling, again, it looks really healthy. Doesn't seem like it's stunted at all, uh, but then Visually striking 
we can see when we roll to the first node, there's definitely some damage. Um, and I measured just quickly today, it's probably about four to five inches difference in height there on average. And if you look across to the second rep there, you can easily pick out that treatment. Uh, and in the other reps as well, it's, it's very noticeable. Not sure how that's going to fare out when we actually take the yield. Uh, we'll have to see what happens there. Probably going to see some difference. Uh, f and for yield, we're going to take a biomass sample, probably about one meter squared to two meters squared uh, section of the crop, weigh that uh, so we can get a tonnage and a moisture on that. And we're also going to take the grain yield to see if we can pick out those differences and see what's happening with all these treatments. You just sell it as a cheaper growth regulator. Or I guess the question is, we never said, why would you roll your barley? Rocks. Rocks is one reason. Some guys like a smoother field, you know, because especially for silaging, you want to make sure you're down as close as the bottom as you can so you can get the whole plant to increase your yield. And uh, yeah, the rocks are the big thing though. So when guys will do it in barley, they'll do it in wheat. We also roll peas, but normally peas we roll before they come out of the ground. Because imagine what would happen if you rolled the peas when it was about this high. Um, so yeah, so the idea is, again, the question is why? Um, and then the, that question to me brings to the next question is when? And that's why we have this study. So right now, yeah, do we see a lot of difference? Not other than maybe, you know, Zadok Stage 31 definitely seeing some, some effect. We'll have to see from there where it goes on. The other questions, and Trevor alluded to some of them, is okay, what about the interactions with other field operations, like for example, herbicide application? Is there going to be, if you roll it like they did here and spray it the next day, especially if you have a hormonal herbicide, is that going to affect, is that a potential affecting growth? Those are other questions that we'll have to look at down the road possibly, um, if somebody's willing to fund that one. So, uh, but yeah, again, we'll wait and see what comes, what happens here. I want to, again, thank Farming Smarter for doing this. Um, appreciate the, the opportunity to, uh, yeah, just to answer one of my pet peeves, I go, why are we doing this and when, if we got to do it, when is the best time to do it? Mm -hmm. I guess uh, one other question too, and kind of the design of the trial, we rolled with the seed rows. Uh, not sure if there would be any differences if you rolled against the seed rows. Or on an angle. Uh, or on an angle, or how much turning affects that crop growth in, in areas where you need to turn around. Uh, we didn't have that option here. Um, but there's all sorts of other questions that are coming up. Also, another thing that I did notice was on this rolling at the first node, you can also come and you can see that there is uh, d more disease in here versus these other ones. I did a quick rating on it today, just rating on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being not much disease at all or, or no disease, and 10 being a lot of disease. Uh, I gave these plots here a one because there is some disease in there, but it's, they're very clean. We haven't sprayed anything on these yet uh, for disease. Um, but then these ones, you can come and you can see there is, uh, yeah, significantly more disease in there. There's, there's some plants that, are, that have died off because they might have got uh, broken right off. Um, some more of those, those lower leaves are, uh, yeah, are being aborted earlier. Uh, so you can come and check that out if you want. Um, yeah, another question that comes up, how, many, how much more disease is going to come in there? How much more chemical do you need, do you need to spray? Uh, those kind of things. Yeah, you notice more tillery by rolling it? Or? The, question. the question was, can we see any more tillering because it was rolled? I can't, no. Um, there doesn't seem to be any positive effect to the growth, especially on this, this one here, on the latest one, where we see any effect at all. There's really nothing yeah. positive for what we can see. Now, and that's why we want to take it to yield, yeah. right? To see, because is yeah. there, what's the actual end result going to be? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that biomass might be able to tell us that. Yeah. Now, the, the interesting point about going across the row with the row, one of, I was talking to one of my customers of, of, of uh, a boat rolling, and they actually had a field where they seeded soft wheat under the pivot and, dry, and in the dry land portion, which is a fair bit, they seeded with barley, and they seeded the barley east-west because it worked best because this is the, if you see a picture of it, there's the most amount of uh, longest distance, and the soft wheat was, was rolled or, or was seeded northwest or north-south. Uh, seeded on May the 2nd, and uh, it was rolled on May the 28th. This picture was, the road imagery was taken on the 15th of June. Now, if you look closely, you can see a line right across here. 
So that's what they rolled from here on down. So for those you can't see it, come on closer. But you can see it here, right across the bottom end of that field, that there's something going on there that was in the rest of the field. And it didn't show up earlier. And it, actually the last shot they had in the beginning of uh, July didn't show this anymore either. But the question again is, how much effect has it had on the crop? Yeah, and that's going across the field. This, this, like this, this is with, yeah. and the green here is again across so, the row. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's and it's also soft wheat versus barley. But the interesting part would be, okay, what about rolling soft wheat? Because a lot of people are now using uh, soft wheat for silage, and they roll it as well. So maybe that's a study that can be looked at doing as well. So this so that be more compaction on a wetter soil too. That's the other thing. Yeah. It's it, it, if it was wetter, but this spring I don't know much about wetter it was on the uh, again rolled the 28th of May. Probably hadn't watered it yet. So mm -hmm. I think rolling with it is better because it kind of keeps the roller off the plant a little more. And we roll our flats. So we try that. So going on the roll, but going with it, it kind of the roller kind of sits up on the grooves behind okay, the, so mm -hmm. the, the cedar. Yeah, so Ryan's basically saying that with his flax, he rolls across uh, with the seed yeah. to keep the, the roller on the ridges yeah. from between the seed. Yeah. It's, it's just so hard on that crown that it's just, just hitting that plant so mm hard. -hmm. Yeah. So in that area that you showed, is that double rolled then? So they rolled this way plus this way? No, it, the wheat was not rolled. The only reason they rolled the, su the south piece of the field was just okay. to, to keep it all okay. even so they didn't have to turn around as often. They just did it on the dry land. Yeah, the, the, the idea was to roll the, the barley, not yeah. the wheat, but they ended up doing the wheat because it was, it was more convenient to get it done. They said, well, why not try it, right? Yeah. Not expecting to see anything, and then yeah. you get the remote imagery, and yeah, you're seeing something. So there's mm -hmm. some, definitely something we're doing when we're rolling the crop. And yeah, to see it visually here now, yeah, this is obvious, but you know, I'm hoping that the best treatment is one leaf stage or earlier because that'll make my life a lot simpler. Um, the other part about it is if you're going to wait till two or three leaf and then it rains, before you know it, you can be at Zadok stage 31. And then we, we can definitely see it right now there is something happening there. So, but come harvest time, we'll have a better idea where it's all at. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Online questions? No. Great, well thanks a lot. Well, we're off anyway. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.